Hey guys, it's Jake here from Canadian Cutting Edge. Happy weekend. At least I'm hoping this goes live on the weekend. Today I'm doing a overview, a talk about a number of different knives from Rake. These are their multi-tool kind of knives. So uh, they've got locking versions and they've got uh, slip joint versions in uh, three main sizes. So you've got their full size ones and a mid size one. And <laughs> here we go. Sorry, I had to do that off camera. And a smallest one. So these three sizes are what they have. And then all kinds of variances. They've got these single bladed ones. And then they've got multi tool ones with all kinds of tools on them. I did a review of this knife. It's the only one they've got in this sort of fruit green color a while back. And uh, it's their large size. And it's got a number of tools on it. Um, where's the, uh, oh, there's the end for it. Saw blades, serrated blades, and all kinds of stuff. And I did a full review of this guy. This is the LD43. And uh, it even has, this one's got a Phillips. A lot of them have a uh, corkscrew. <laughs> uh, so you've got, they've got all kinds of great knives. This one's got a locking blade. Most of them have slip joints. And that's what we're going to look at today. So if you're interested at all in these folding tools, stick around. One of the first things that people are going to do is they're going to want to compare these to the Victorinox knives and see how they go. Well, I've got basically both extremes of the sizes of the Victorinox knives. Yes, there are bigger Victorinox knives, but this is sort of the general full-size Victorinox. This is a uh, copy of the rucksack, and it's got uh, this locking mechanism. I forget what they call it with this locking mechanism, but basically you uh, pull this back Really nice texture for gripping, and then the knife can be unlocked, and then right now it's locked until you pull that back. So it's got a full-size locking blade, a uh, nice handle here, multi-tool, uh, you know, you've got the tweezers and stuff back here, and a little hole for a keychain ring or what have you, and then it's got the multi-tools, you know, a variety of them, including a uh, pretty good saw blade. Now, the knives that uh, that uh, Rake is making, and this is their largest, most multi-tool one, is basically the exact same blade in terms of how long the cutting edge is. It, If I go from sharpener's choil to tip and I reverse them across each other, it's almost identical. But we've got a larger blade on the Rake, a little bit thicker steel, a little bit more heavy duty in in that sense, and, you know, big knife. And it works very, very well. But I'm not going to re-review this guy. I just wanted to point that out, so we'll put that aside. We've got two of the full-size rake knives here, and I was going to get them in two different colors, but I got them both in black at, anyway. This is the slip joint version, so uh, it can be pushed on the back and it'll start to close. Or we've got the locking version, and it's got the uh, spring, the sprung liner lock that's very common on older folders when they first started putting liner locks on uh, folders. It doesn't really engage at the tang of the blade right there the way uh, most locking folders do when we say we've got early lockup or late lockup. Uh, these tend to, you know, just be sprung and they just go all the way over on their own. Let's see if I can get some in here. It just goes all the way over to the side. And so you've got a little bit up and down blade play. And that's just normal. That's the way they're designed. It's not, it's not that this is a bad example and they should have returned it. It's designed to do this. That, that's how it's made to be. So they're not looking for a perfect up and down lockup. Even on this one, it's the exact same way. And in fact, you can find an awful lot of Victorinox knives 
that has this exact same kind of lockup that works the exact same way and that leaves that up and down blade plane. So I'm not complaining about that at all. I'm just stating it just in case some of you guys are wondering. So that's what we've got. Lockup, the lockup version's got a thumb stud and it's uh, of course one side only because if you were to close it, well, maybe the thumb stud wouldn't get in the way over here, but I think it would get in the way of that uh, liner lock right there. But uh, so right side only for the thumb stud. This is the lowest functioning knife they have. So this is, they're saying it's got four functions to it. You've got a blade, you've got a pocket clip. I don't know why they call that a function, but they do. So that's the first two functions. Then we've got a tungsten glass breaker. And finally, we have tweezers. So that's really good. I'll come across the sizes later on. One of the things that I like the most about these over Victorinox knives is the texture on the G10 here. First that it is G10, and then the texture that it has on there. Very good grip, not overly grippy, but a very good grip. Whereas the Victorinox knives tend to be smoother. Uh, they're not, a, they don't have bad grip to them. I'm not trying to say that it's a terrible knife. Uh, the, the Victorinox knives are actually very nice, but I like this texture, this grippiness better. So this is the L series. Their L is the large and the LD is locking. The D stands for locking somehow. And just the L and then the number stands for, um, you know, the, uh, sprung, the, the, the slip joint. So this is, I've got the 11 series here. So this is the LD11, B for black, L11, B for black. This is the M11, G for green. This is the S, I'll do this one first. This is the S11, G for green. And I've got the S21 in here as well. So 11 is the one with the least number of functions. And then you've got a 21 and a 31 and you know, other numbers. And as the number gets larger, it's got more functions to it. So I'm going to put the S21 aside for now. And we were working our way down. So we've talked about the L and how big it is. We'll do, we'll do the sizes a little bit later. And uh, so you've got locking and not locking. And then the rest of these sizes, the M and the S, none of them have a locking. There's no liner lock version. They're all just slip joint and with a, with a nail neck on them. So nice nail neck. And so the M is the, I guess, mid-size version that they have got. S, M, and L. Uh, the uh, M, it's got a pocket clip. And it's a very good size for the pocket, to be honest with you. By the way, all of these are uh, Sandvik 12C27 steel. And the uh, M11 comes in green or black. You've got that tungsten tip glass breaker. Uh, you've got the uh, tweezers here. And these are very nice tweezers, by the way. I really like them an awful lot. And that's all that you have here. So those four functions, blade, pocket clip, glass breaker, tweezers and that really nice G10 texture again that I like an awful lot. And then the S series is the small one. So I'm going to compare that a little bit to the uh, classic, just because I don't have um, the next size up from the classic. Let's see, the classic is a really small knife, uh, small multi-tool with a tiny blade. Uh, let's put these aside here a little bit and zoom in on this just a little bit. I'm going to actually move the camera instead of using the zoom feature so that we keep the resolution quite high. So the S11, very small knife, nice texture on the G10. Basically, you've got a blade and you've got a key ring. This one does not have any a glass breaker. It does not have tweezers. It's the most simple um, uh, slip joint knife that Rake has. It comes with the uh, split ring back here. And, you know, you've got a split ring that comes with the classic as well, but you've got a nice size blade. Now look at this. Let's compare this to the rucksack. And what I'm comparing is how big the blade is in depth, you know, from spine, from spine, spine to belly, how deep it is that way. It's, of course, smaller than the rucksack, but it's a good size. 
it's not really tiny like these pen blades on the Classic. See, this makes the S11 look huge, <laughs> whereas this makes, you know, the S11 look tiny. So it really depends on what you're comparing it to, right? And I really like this size. It's perfect. I found that this Classic is sometimes not quite enough knife for me on my keychain. I like having a good knife on my keychain. I found that I almost never use uh, this file function here, uh, but I do like to have a little bit of a tool to pry with every once in a while, so that's a really good thing there. And basically, you've got a scissor back here as well. There it is, which is really nice. And I've done a talk on uh, this knife as well, and you've got the tweezers. So I really like the Classic with all its functionality. I think I'm going to go out, and if I get another Victorinox, I'm going to get something more this size, because I'm finding this size is much more attractive for me. And I really like how it works. And this is how I carry it. I carry it on my keys, and I've got one of these little carabiner clips, and I just uh, clip it on there. And that's how it hangs from my set of keys. So I've always got my knife with me, but I've got it in a way that I can take it off when I want to, when I want to use it. So I don't always have the whole set of keys dangling in my hand when I'm trying to use the knife. Uh, the uh, nail neck is perfect for it. Nice depth to the blade, nice cutting edge, nice uh, thickness behind the grind. It's a full hollow grind, so the hollow grind goes right to the spine of the blade. And uh, the uh, springiness on this is very good. It takes a lot of pressure to make it start to close. It just wants to stay open until about that point. And then now that spring takes over and it wants to stay closed. This will not accidentally open on you while you're carrying it. It just, you know, it just won't. Very, very good that way. So this is not the key that I... The, so this is not the knife that I actually end up carrying an awful lot on my person. I ended up getting this one for that. And this is the uh, 21. So the S21. So you've got the same blade and, you know, the key ring there. The only addition you have is this tool here. I found that this is much stronger for doing some prying or a little bit of flat driving. And then we've got a ripper. You can use that to rip a seatbelt, cordage, all kinds of things, and you've got a bottle opener, and then they've got this little V end here that you can use a bit as a wire stripper. And so this is just a little bit bigger with a lot more functionality, and it uh, looks good in black on my keychain. And so that's this is what I carry for my keys. I just have my my vehicle, uh, my mailbox key, <laughs> and my house key, and that's all that I carry anymore these days. I really like that an awful lot. And so let's give you the sizes for all of these things before I forget to cover all that information. And I'll do the prices as well in just a moment. So what do we got? Um, blade thickness. These little guys start at two millimeters thick, 2.3 millimeters thick, and these guys are three millimeters thick. So very, very good, thick sturdiness to this knife. Uh, whereas this guy stays down at two millimeters, even though it's the full size. The extra height that you have here gives you the same angle of bevel, pretty much, very close to the same angle of bevel. So it slices just as well as the Victorinox while maintaining a fair bit more strength on the blade. So that's that dimension. Um, the uh, blade length on these, this little guy is 5.3 centimeters, 2.1 inches, 7.1 centimeters, 2.79 inches, almost 2.8 inches. This thing's 8.5 centimeters, 3.35 inches. So if you're limited by the 3-inch law where you live, you're going to be stuck with the M as the uh, largest one that you'll want to carry. And the handle lengths on these... You've got 7.1 centimeters, 2.79 inches, uh, 9.6 centimeters, 3.78 inches, and this is 11.4 centimeters, 4.5 inches. 
So when you open it up, you've got a knife that is uh, 12.2 centimeters long, uh, 2.79, uh, sorry, 12.2 centimeters, 4.8 inches. This guy is 16 and a half centimeters. That's almost six and a half inches, 6.45. Uh, 19.7 centimeters, uh, seven and three quarter inches. And this is seven and three quarter inches as well. How much do they weigh? Well, this little guy is 30 grams, just over an ounce, 1.05 ounces. And this guy adds uh, a fair bit. It adds 13 grams because of that second tool. This is 43 grams, one and a half ounces. So it adds half an ounce to this. Uh, this guy is 60 grams, 2.1 ounces, 84.5 grams, three ounces. And then this is 95 grams, 3.35 ounces. And of course, you can go up and up. And this one's a fair bit more. You can watch the video on this one separately. Uh, all these extra tools really start to add up. It weighs a fair bit more than the rucksack, but it does have more tools. It is thicker. Uh, like I said, you've got Sandvik Steel 12C27. Uh, uh, the Rockwell on this, the hardness is usually around 59. Uh, 12C27 is one of those steels, depending on how you do the um, the uh, hardening on it, it can be all the way down from 56 all the way to 61 on the Rockwell scale. Uh, most people do it at around 59, or most factories do it at around 59. And I think that's the information I got from Rake a while back for theirs. Um, so they've all got the glass breaker, except for the smallest one. And um, they've got a pocket clip, except for the smallest one. And the pocket clip is one of those deep carry pocket clips, the fold over. So that's a really good thing. So I found that I really do like pocket clips. Uh, most of these other knives, like a Victorinox, it's really rare to have a pocket clip. And so you just have to drop them in your pocket or use them in a pouch. And that's one of the biggest pluses which drew me uh, to these knives. These pocket clips are super handy and they carry deep. Uh, you don't have an awful lot of knife showing. And they're easy to grab when you need them. So they're in your pocket and they're just sitting there, discreet. And when you need it, you pull it out and you use it. Very, very good thing. I've done cut tests with 12C27. I've showed you a lot of that. Uh, you can watch this video if you wanna see how well these blades perform. They sharpen very well. And uh, this hollow grind, you know, is just an awesome thing. Uh, oh, sorry, this largest one is a flat grind. So you've got a hollow grind on the two smaller ones. And then this largest one is, I believe it's a flat grind. Let me double check that. So I've got a flat edge right here on the set of keys. Yes. So I made a mistake there. Flat grind on the L's and the M and the S's have hollow grinds. So this L11B is one of the knives I've found that I'm carrying quite a lot. Uh, well, actually I carry this one a little bit more, the uh, LD, because it's got the lock on it. And um, it's all the knife I need most of the time. I've got a big blade, nice sharpener's toil on it, cuts very well, it comes very sharp from the factory. All of these come very sharp from the factory. I've not had to sharpen any of these yet. I don't like to sharpen my knives unless I need to. And so once this edge is dull, I'll give it its first sharpening. But it cuts very well. The uh, thumb studs far enough back that it doesn't get in the way of slicing through things. It could be a smaller thumb stud. The thumb stud is quite large. See how you see it sticking out right there? And... uh it's a big thumb stud. Being big makes it really easy to work. Um, you won't flick it out, but you can, you know. It just has a little bit more spring to it um, than um, a lot of knives do. And like a lot of folding knives that are slip joints, it has a detent right there at the 45, well, roughly 45 degree mark. So open, locked. 45 degree mark, it wants to stop there and then close, which means when you go to close it, you can do it that far, 
make sure your hand is out of the way of the blade and then close it. It's a very, very good knife. And um, at, you know, 3.35 ounces, it's not bad at all. The uh, tungsten tip uh, on the glass breaker, let's see if you can see it. Maybe you can see that that tungsten tip is on there. It's a little darker color on the tip than anywhere else. That's a big plus. And I've actually found I've had use for these uh, uh, tweezers. And so it's a good thing that those are on there. You don't find tweezers on very many knives unless they're, you know, a Victorinox or the like. So this knife is kind of unique. You've got really cool G10, a little bit extra texture uh, design on the sides here. Uh, you maybe see it a little bit better on the green version. Uh, you've got these cutouts here. And so it's a very, very pleasant knife. These knives have a five-year warranty. That's on parts and labor, as long as the knife wasn't abused. And then a lifetime warranty on uh, labor, and you pay for the parts after that. They look good, and they work good. Let's do a little bit of cut test to do a little bit of demonstration. So from the factory, they very easily cut paper, no problem at all. And um, they they look good. Uh, let's see if we've got something else to cut that's a little bit more robust. Got a little bit of cardboard here. And, you know, that's two layers of cardboard right there. And not a problem at all. I have to be careful here because I've got stuff set up just outside the bounds of the vision of this camera right here. So I can't just send my arm flying through. I'll knock stuff over over there. So I have to go slowly. So it cuts very, very well. And it looks good doing it. <laughs> if you've got any questions, I'll be happy to try to answer them for you. You can get versions of these with a lot more different tools. Uh, check out rakeknives.ca. The prices of these is what really is the great thing. This guy is $20 Canadian. That's $15.52 US. So 15 bucks for a top quality knife with Sandvik steel. That's not going to happen very easily anywhere else. Uh, this one here with the extra tool right here. This guy is twenty five ninety five in in American. That's twenty dollars and nineteen cents. So a twenty dollar U.S. knife, very very handy, very nice. Uh, the M eleven is thirty dollars and ninety five cents Canadian, which is twenty four dollars and eight cents U.S. right now. That changes all the time as the dollar goes up and down. The L11, so the slip joint version, is $34.95. That's $27.20 American. And then the LD11 is $38.95, which is $30.31 American. So for $30 American, you've got a knife blade that's, uh, what did I say, 3.3 inches here. Where's the exact measurement? 3.35 inches. So three and a third inches of cutting edge. No, of blade length. Sorry, blade length. And, uh, you know, feels good in the hand. Great pocket clip that you can use. And, uh, you know, a little bit of tools with it as well that might come in handy. One of the things I'm not too fond of is when you look through the website through these multi-tool knives, once you start getting more tools, almost all of them have the uh, um, bottle opener, the uh, corkscrew. Almost all of them have the corkscrew. And I really don't, I don't remember the last time I used a corkscrew on a pocket knife. Um, I got a corkscrew in my kitchen, dining room area in my house, and that's the only place I've ever used a corkscrew. Um, and so I really like the versions that have, you know, some other tool like this Phillips screwdriver instead of a corkscrew, but very, very few of them have that. So that's the only thing that I don't like about this series of knives. And that leaves an awful lot of things that I like an awful lot. Even this tiniest guy has got a really nice sharpener's choil. 
So thank you so much for watching my video. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting. I'm sure there's some things I missed, so there's going to be some questions below in the section down there. Yes, Americans, you can buy directly from rakeknives.ca. Um, I'm suggesting that you go to Rake Knives because they were willing to sell these knives to me at a good discount. Uh, so I did buy these knives, but I did buy them at a discount. And uh, you can, they'll ship straight to U.S., and of course, all of the knives at uh, rakeknives.ca are already in Canada. So if you're a Canadian and you're concerned about uh, you know the border right now, and it's a fight that we're going to win with CBSA, um, you can buy these knives from rakeknives.ca and they will ship them to you right away. Um, not just these knives, but Rake has got other folders that uh, CBSA might otherwise confiscate, but uh, you can get them easily right now. And there's one of the rake knives that I'll show you a picture of it. It's one of my favorite knives folders right now for a budget knife. Not favorite knife overall, but one of my favorite budget knives is a rake knife. I think it's the P801. So guys, thank you so much for watching my video. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. Thanks to my Patreon supporters. You guys are the best. Remember, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.